If you need some translation, we have translation devices. You can pick them up right up here. Uh, so that, that should help you uh, in terms of understanding the discussion uh, that is taking place. Uh, we're fortunate to have uh, Senator uh, Keith Wright, Chair of the uh, Housing Committee, information, current information of what's taking place in Albany, as well as uh, his take on affordable housing. So I give you a Senator Keith. Hey, hey. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. First of all, I want to thank all of you for coming and, and, and giving up with your Saturday. Uh, this is really the turnout for this conference, not only yesterday, but today, I think is absolutely mind-boggling. We also have the Deputy Borough President of Manhattan with us here today, Albert and Bunia, uh, the Deputy Borough President of Borough Manhattan does a very, very good job. And uh, But the, the attendance today has been absolutely wonderful, has, has been absolutely wonderful, so I want to thank you all for coming up. Uh, the title of this workshop, is in terms of this being a subtext of the of the title of today today being demystifying demystifying as it goes demystifying, demystifying affordable housing well uh and, and the community boards what role does the community boards play in terms of helping to demystify the community boards play a very very important role that's why i am so glad that we see if we uptown get a chance to see other folks from other community boards. It's, it's critical, because what you'll find out, what you'll find out, and I've often said that white folks ain't coming to home because they love black people so much, um, but they are being priced out of Chelsea, they're being priced out of the Upper East Side, they're being priced out of Grand Turk. You know, this is a, a crisis that's hitting everywhere. It's across the board. It's white, it's black, it's Latino, it's Asian, it's everybody. That's why it's very important. You have, uh, Nick Rigo, who actually is a district leader, he didn't tell you that. Um, uh, uh, he and I worked very well together throughout all of New York County to bring democratic policies and principles to, to you folks. But this is not part of it, so I can't get too political right now. So, but you have some of the West Side, Upper East Side, and folks from all around the borough, including our home right here, Community Board 10 and Community Board 12. And uh, I'm so that's why it's critical that you hear their perspectives as well. Because this housing crisis is hitting everybody. Everybody. I mean, and, and it's not just Harlem. I mean, I'm times I walk down the street, I can't find an affordable apartment in Harlem and blah, 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 and you know how it goes. It's global. It's global. It's everybody. We were born. We were born. Everybody. So, anyway, let me just give you some quick news so you can get on with the subject of that. As you know, Monday is D-Day. Monday yes. is the day of reckoning. Monday is the rubber meets the road. Monday is the day that we in the legislature are supposed to renew the rent stabilization, rent regulation law. I can probably tell you it ain't going to happen. All right? Let's be clear. Now, we don't want panic in the streets. We don't want uh, the world to come to an end. But the offers, we don't have a lot of friends in office. Let's be clear. We don't have a lot of friends in office. So what I'm trying to tell you is that I can't, I can't accept an offer that is deficient. I can't accept an offer that's insulting. I cannot accept an offer that is just unacceptable. We in the assembly put forth a bill in our bill, and we passed this bill in the Senate assembly. We got rid of vacancy decontrol. We got rid of preferential rents. We got rid of um, 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 uh, MCIs uh, as be, for being used as paying MCIs in perpetuity. And we also put in some very strong anti-harassment provisions that landlords subject our tenants to. We've also raised the threshold. So, we passed that bill in the assembly. So the Republicans came back with an offer that was just totally unacceptable. Now, what you have to remember, there's a lot of politics going on too. The governor is, 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 is linking um, the rent bill and the rent regulations to, you've seen it on television, something called the educational tax credit. 
<laughs> it has nothing to do with nothing. This is apples and the other one is oranges. Let's be clear. Let's be clear, but that's politics. So we're trying to get them off of that. Um, and then, of course, 421A, which nobody knows anything about, but you've seen the commercials. Just by virtue of seeing these commercials, when you see a commercial on TV, just know, just know that there's big money behind it. Because buying airtime in New York, buying airtime in New York, each side paid $10 million. The 421A people take pay $10 million for the commercials, and the, and the, uh, the organized labor folks pay $10 million. A lot of money, a lot of money. So it's something that most folks know nothing about, but it affects all of us, it affects all of us. So what we will probably do is we will try our best to make sure that rent laws do not lapse, but just know this, people's leases do prevail and people's leases do control. The world won't come to an end, but we will more than likely just pass little extenders to keep rent regulations in place. Hopefully the Republicans will do that. We're supposed to end our legislative season on Wednesday. On Wednesday. But the governor has said that he's going to call us back until we get rent regulations, which is good. But just know the Senate Republicans, the Senate, wants, they want rent regulations to end. They don't want it. And why? Because of politics. You gotta know. The Republicans, the Senate Republican majority only has two senators from the city of New York. Two. And they're both in Staten Island. They don't care about rent regulation. Be clear. Meanwhile, most of us from the city of New York are in the assembly. We we're saying so we, we live and die in this issue. Just know that I also take this issue very personally because I live in the same rent-regulated apartment that I grew up in. The same one. The same one. You know, so my brand is pretty good at the moment. I want to keep it that way, right? I want to keep it that way. You know, if you think I'm going to tell you how much rent I'm paying, you know, you're crazy. <laughs> Some of y'all may try and come and move in with me, right? I'm talking kids that I have <laughs> No, I got both my, listen, you know, both my kids, you know, my older one graduated from college, he had a nice little job, but you know, he's, my older one's still living with me. And I love him to death, you know, but he uses the paper towels, he uses, you know, when I'm driving home from Albany, you know, I, sometimes I have, you know, I, you know, I come home, ate dinner, and I have, you know, I think about the ice cream that I bought the night before. Oh, think about it. Man, yeah. Come on, stop lying. You know you think about that ice cream. The haagen So I get home, I'm driving, you know, two and a half hours. Sylvia Tyler knows that, you know, it's a long drive. I've been doing it for 23 years. But, you know, some of the things you look forward to when you were younger, you look forward to different things now that you're older. I look forward to the pint of ice cream. Okay. I get home, that ice cream's gone. I say, what happened to my ice cream? Everybody looks around, like, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. But they ate my ice cream. Because he cannot afford to live on his own. He's got a nice job. Goes to work every day. But in order to live on your own now, these young folks, you got to make sixty, seventy thousand dollars a year. Yes. He's not making that. Right. He's not making that. Nor is he paying me any rent either. Because you know, I got to save his money. And that's his mother's fault. That's not my fault. You got to pay something. You got to pay something, right? That's what I'm saying. So he got to pay his phone bill. We'll talk later. The chair of the board is going to get me off the stage now. You ever see your father You ever see your father say, sad man, we're going to get you off? I just want to say thank you all for coming. Thank you all. Thank you for participating. This is our community. This is your community. This is what community belongs to all of us. So let's fight like hell to make sure that we don't lose. All right? Thank you. You want to ask me questions? If the man is asking, I'll take I'll take three questions. All right. Okay. Your floor. Go. Uh, I'll take you. Yeah. Good afternoon. Your name, please.
Yeah. 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 Yeah.
my lease came due, you know, last week. I got that lease in so fast before rent regulations began. <laughs> I got it in. It went up like sixty dollars. I got it in. But I'm just saying. But the word, and that's an excellent question. We just have to keep calm and keep our ears to the ground on what's going on in all. And doesn't hurt to um, bang the governor a little bit. I wouldn't be. Upset. So what about foreclosures? Some buildings that are foreclosing and people are living there where they have a lease and don't have a lease? Your lease is controlling. Your lease is good. <laughs> foreclosures, I mean, that's just cer cer certain um, separate and, 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 and uh, real estate transactions. But I'm just talking about for rent stabilized apartments. Rent stabilized, rent controlled apartments right now. That's, in, that's what our. Um, that's what we're supposed to do. And then we'll talk about 421A and all the rest of the stuff in education tax rate. I'll take one last one. All right, so uh, also um, did I mention about every neighborhood been, uh, also impacted and affected by Sandy. That could put in a recipe for gentrification. You're talking Coney Island, you're talking um, Sheepshead Bay, you're talking the Rockaway and of course the East Shores of Staten Island could be affected, impacted. How do you uh, prevent them um, and how to cut the red tape from this um, burning? From, um, and how they get people back on their feet. Uh, well, the, the Sandy, you're talking, how do Sandy. people recover from Hurricane Sandy? Right. That you're asking me? Yeah. Well, there's a whole lot of money. There's a whole lot of money that's been designated by the federal government. Uh, especially for our developments, our New York City public housing developments. Uh, Chuck Schumer was responsible for getting $3 billion for New York Housing Authority to help with the Hurricane Sandy repair. Not that that, has, not that that has much to do with the renewal of rent regulation, but it, but it is an excellent, excellent question. So there's a lot, and also the state has an office of storm recovery, which is located on Beaver Street. All right, so, uh, so if you have a particular concern, a particular apartment, a particular house, give them a call. All right, and then you, you live in Staten Island, you live in Coney Island? No, I live in um, Crown Heights. But Where you live in Crown Heights? Let me stop you. If you live in Crown Heights, and I'm gonna ask you a question. Who is your legislator in Crown Heights? Well, my legislator should be uh, Violet Montgomery, my state senator, uh, right, my good. state senator, good. and my state assemblyman could be uh, Walter Mosley. Okay, you did very good. I bet if I Five more people in here who are state legislators. On. So you, what I'm saying is that you give them a call regarding the accessing of the Sandy. All right. All right. Okay. Sorry. 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 Right. Good. I encourage you to uh, contact uh, Keith Strike's office if you have any further questions. But we will have we have to go with the panel. I, I don't know how long you're going to stick around. I'm going right now. See you later. <laughs> um, so I'm going to I'm just I'm gonna go eat some ice cream now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna conduct this uh, this uh, panel another way. Uh, by just generally asking him questions, and if you have any questions, we'll hold it for a while. But I would like them to inform you, uh, and we'll start from the very, we'll start here, uh, what their committee board is doing for affordable housing, and how can you help? Okay, so I'm Barbara Nelson. I'm on community board 10. Do I need to stand? Can I stand? No, you can stand. Thank you. I'm from Community Board 10, which is right here in Harlem. And we have, like I mentioned earlier, our housing committee meeting meets the fourth Monday at 6.30. So what we've come across in the last three months or so is there are a couple of different things that are happening all at the same time that do impact our housing. So New York City Planning has come up with this plan to, with, from the mayor's 10-year five-borough housing. He's supposed to be making sure that we have over 200,000 affordable housing developed. But that's broken down in various ways. That means that if the zoning laws go through, that they can build higher, they can make the apartments smaller, 
and they're going to focus on senior housing. But they're going to focus on the senior housing lots that have been used for parking. So you, we no longer need the lots because we need housing. So that means that we need the seniors to come to the community board to tell us how they feel about that. We have deadlines that have to be reached in terms of sending in responses. So once I attended this meeting that New York, New York City Planning had, I was a bit concerned that the information that was being given to us wasn't broken down per district. Community Board 10, Community Board 12, Community Board 7. So they're getting back to us. They just recently handed us something that has the breakdown. So what we're doing in Community Board 10 is we're working on identifying within our community board plan which housing, which NYCHA houses are going to be targeted to begin the work. They've already publicly announced three, but they were in Brooklyn. One's in Brooklyn, I believe one is in uh, Queens, maybe two in Brooklyn and one in Queens. But they haven't designated which one in community board 10 will be targeted. So that's it for the NYCHA, that's it for the senior housing. What we need to hear from is the tenants and the residents who live in these rent-stabilized housing, for instance. In our community board meeting, what happens is most of you come to us when things are at a crisis level. So we have a website. We've done really good in republishing our website. We have to click on a link. It tells you what committees to address. We don't just address housing. We address many areas. But we, want, we need to hear from you because we're the advocates for you. But if you're not coming to our committee meetings telling us your concerns, then we also have land use and we have transportation. We have people who come and present, for instance, the, the builders of housing. They have to go to the land use committee. When they go to the land use committee, they're asking, um, they're presenting that they want to build this building in this location, and what do we think about it as a community board? Well, if the community doesn't come to the community board meeting and doesn't come to our full, full board meeting, which is on Wednesday, it's the first Wednesday of every month, wow. in this building here on the second floor, how are we supposed to know what your concerns are? Remember, we don't get paid to do this job. We are volunteers. I've been on the community board close to seven years now. And so it's time consuming in terms of advocating for you, to fairly advocate for you, we need to hear from you. So please, come out to your community board. Our office again is at 215 West 125th Street if you live in the community board 10 area. I'd like to certainly echo what Barbara said. It's certainly critical. It's critical to have individuals from the neighborhood to come to these meetings. Uh, one of the things that uh, all the community boards do is they put their agenda up either online or it's posted on various things. In our community, I'm in community board six, a, a number of the uh, telephone booths have our agenda posted up maybe about a month before so everyone can see the type of topics that we're going to talk about. Generally what I try to do is I try to touch, because we deal with housing, homeless, and human rights, I try to touch all three at once or at least one or two depending on what type of legislation uh, our elected officials are uh, proposing or promoting. And if they are housing related, I will definitely have the committee look at that. We review it, we talk about it. If the public is there, we can certainly answer any questions they have. And then we make a decision whether we're going to support it or if we're not going to support it. Most of the time, the resolutions that we look at and the legislation that we look at are to protect rent stabilized, to protect you know, homeowners to, to protect tenants. And that's our, you know, our major issue here. In my specific community board, we are dealing with a number of different things. We have a number of Mitchell Lamas that are no longer going to be a part of the program, so they're slowly trying to phase themselves out. There's now the issue, of course, because they were Mitchell Lamas, they were certainly under those rent guidelines according to income. So now the issue is, what would HPD do? Is there gonna be, you know, how are they gonna protect them? Uh, between Section 8 uh, vouchers, uh, sticky vouchers for veterans, those are the kind of things that we try to look at. And we basically reach back to HPD on a number of these questions, because when the community comes to us, not only that we already know these issues, because we're, since we all live in the community, we have members who are in these various buildings, we bring these topics up internally to talk about. So when we bring them up and we have additional neighborhood support, 
it, it gives us more of, a, of an argument to go back to these agencies and say, this needs to be. Here, watch South. You're thinking, ah, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't affect me. We are, we are there on the front lines with cap pistols. We got cap pistols. Okay, these people come to the community board meeting. They have a battery of lawyers. Yes. I'm a lawyer, I'll tell you. And you get guys, they have lawyers, men and women, who spend all day in this stuff. And I will tell you, you're a wash in numbers. I won't hit you with all the housing programs because there's so many of them. Your head will spin. My head spins. And that is not by accident. Okay? So what I'm saying is, take a look at what's happening in Community Board 8 because you, you have a division going on. And with the subway especially, what's going to be yes. happening up here in Harlem because you're next. Mm -hmm. You're yeah, next when they go north, when that when that yeah. money for the MTA That's comes. Right. The next phase is coming up here, mm -hmm. and they're making a big they're making a big left left turn if you're coming from the south, or right turn if you're looking south to uh, to out here by the MTA to the to the Metro North. Um, and what's going to happen is what's happening in our community board is they're selling air rights now. Right. This is the new real estate game yes. for yes. affordable housing. And why would you be on the front lines? You're getting a lot of money. And there's a move afoot that, that's being talked about of taking buildings that are six stories tall, these yes. tenement buildings that are beautiful, and they're saying, on that location, you could actually build a 20-story building. And so people are saying, yeah, but you know, I don't have the money to build it, and I like my tenants, and it's a hassle. And so the big developer comes in and he says, tell you what I'll do. I'll buy all that air that's over your head, and you can't build up it. I'm going to take all that air, and I'm going to put it on top of my building. And I'm going to go higher. And what's happening on 2nd Avenue now, because I live there. I live on top of 2nd Avenue. I watch it every day. And at 72nd Street, where you're going to have a station, the church just sold their air rights. Now, oh. where it was, the church just sold it for... Hundred million dollars. Yeah. Whoa! That's it. Now I'm telling you, and I have a chart because I went to the conference and I sent it to you if you'd like. Someone has done a chart of air rights of what's going on and the sale prices of all the locations in Manhattan in the last few years. And you have churches who are selling their air rights. The yes. church on Park Avenue, not to single them out because my brother's a minister and I understand. It's hard to get money to collect the place. It's hard for a, a Methodist minister, my brother, probably couldn't turn down the $31 million that they sold their air rights for. The point is what I'm making, and I'll stop, is that um, these housing issues are very complicated and people are playing with a lot of zeros and a lot of money, and I think everybody in this room understands what I was talking about before in terms of what really drives the bus. It's not whether you're black or white. Right. That's just another way of dividing and conquering. Okay? It's another way of dividing and conquering. And I think that we need to have a unified front when we're dealing with them. And again, it's not about being anti-development, because that's what they'll say. Oh, you're against development and you anti-job and put everybody out of work. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is, how do you, what is a community? What is, you know, it, it's a building is one thing, but do you have a park? Do you have a school? Do you have a sense of community? And can that be part of the development that goes on? And I think that's part of the issue that we're dealing with, especially in, in CB8. And I think it is one that's affecting a lot of other ones, and it's lost in so many other things going on. So anyway, I, I throw that out there to you. Please come to one of our meetings, because again, it, it's coming to a community board near you. Whatever, Whatever's happening, it is coming. And you know, maybe not tomorrow, but it'll be there. And, and, and see how it's being dealt with. So I wish I didn't follow you, because I'm ready to follow you on the streets right now. <laughs> Good answer to that. But I want to There's a lot of key themes here. That I, uh, again, I'm going to go Upper West Side Community Board 7. There are some key theme, themes here that we talk about a lot. On our, I mean, the Upper West Side is somewhat similar to the Upper East Side. Of that. There's a lot of money in our neighborhood. And the issues that we talk about have so many zeros at the end of it that it's so tough at the local level and like on the ground to be fighting against five, six, seven zeros at the end of these numbers. How do you do it as an individual? And honestly, we haven't figured it out yet. Whoever does figure it out, please let me know because uh, the Community Board 7 wants to, be, you know, wants to be a part of that good fight. What we usually think about is trying to change the mentality of what housing means. All of these zeros have turned housing and people's homes into commodities. And our homes are not stocks being traded on some stock exchange. They're not pork belly futures in Chicago. These are where people actually live. What makes someone 
Someone is the community that they're in. These are not things that can be separated. And every time that a house is just treated like a zero on a spreadsheet somewhere, you're, you're, you're hurting someone's life. You're hurting real people in real communities. And the people making these decisions don't necessarily think in those terms. So I know we think about that a lot at CB7 because you know, we do have a lot of wealthy individuals. What's also interesting in our neighborhood is even the wealthy individuals cannot live in CB7 anymore if they have to buy market rate units. Doctors and lawyers, professionals, people who spend their whole lives in schools to get really good jobs cannot afford to buy market rate units on the Upper West Side. It means the city, the, the, the neighborhood is, is kind of stuck in you know trench warfare to a certain extent yeah. where people are trying to hold on to you know hold on to their lives, hold on to their communities and the units they're in now. And they're they, they're fighting against only not even just the rich, the ultra rich are the only people that can come in and take and take units away. And every time one of these rent regulated units is the issue that I'm thinking about a lot lately because it's in, it's in Albany right now, but it applies to many, many different types of affordable programs. Every time one of those units is lost, it's that trench warfare you're retreating a little bit, a few steps every single time. And I can tell you that I, I have gained more from just making friends with you guys, like so our community boards can like band together and work yeah. on these issues. Yes. That's yeah. really the only way that there's ever gonna be a victory here. And I can tell you it is tough to get a victory on housing issues at the community board level, but when you do actually get one, it feels great because you know you're actually making a difference in someone's life. So with that, I turn it back over. Yes. Uh, just want to give you a few announcements. Uh, if you are interested in community board in terms of leadership training series that the uh, borough president is having, uh, it is open to the public. Uh, and you should call the office uh, to find out more about it or go on the Merle, uh, Merle President's uh, website. Uh, so there is, there are actually courses and budgeting process, uh, conflict of interest, uh, and a variety of other things in terms of open data for the community uh, so that you can better understand uh, where you live and uh, how that community functions. The Merle President's office, if you don't have it, is the telephone number is 212-669-8300. And of course, uh, she's located in cent uh, Center Street at the 19th floor. Uh, there is a Northern Manhattan office, which is now a storefront office. And that's on 431 West 125th Street, which is further down uh, towards the, we uh, the west. Uh, that telephone number is 212-531-1609. Uh, so I have the sheet up here if you wish to look at that. The telephone number again, there is 212-531-1609. There is a fair housing, this question came up in terms of fair housing and discrimination. The uh, Human Rights Commission is uh, offering uh, a uh, symposium on fair housing on June 18th between 8.30 and 10, 1, uh, 1 p.m. Uh, and it's at the Brooklyn Law School, which is downtown Brooklyn at 205 State Street. You can register at 212, it looks like 863-8033, uh, uh, or you can go to the Human Rights Commission's reps, website and you'll see a card like this, and it's in English and uh, Spanish. So I'll leave that up here for anyone who also wants to look at it. Uh, and finally, um, uh, there's a gentleman here who did a filming of, of, uh, of the activities of this season in terms of of uh, rent, of the rent struggle we're going through, and I just want him to have a say. <clears throat> Hello, um, my name is Chris Delgado. I live in the Upper West Side. I have a company called MultiHop.TV. My business partner, his name is Sid Locks. We took the trip to Albany on um, June 3rd. We covered the entire civil disobedience. Um, we put together a 30-minute documentary called Rent Wars. And it's representing everybody here. And it's representing 2.5 million New Yorkers. Mm -hmm. um, it's on my website, and you guys, uh, if everybody can help it go viral. Mm -hmm. We're doing this together. So um, I, have bu I have business cards where you can access the, um, the documentary. I'm going to give them out to everybody. The documentary is called Rent Wars, Year of the Tenant. And we're covering everything that you guys are talking about. Uh, we did this on our own. Nobody paid us to do it. We took our time out to do it, and I think it's going to help the petitions and everything yes. that everybody's doing. So I think if everybody watches the documentary, has friends, has Facebook, can share it, yes. send it to other officials, and help us get it out there, I think it could help this fight. And um, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, petitions are one thing, um, paperwork and everything is one thing, but 
we're the age of technology and the social networks. So with um, what we did, we feel that we can, if this goes viral, it'll put pressure. It'll put pressure on these other people because when something goes viral and it snowballs, it's different when it's, it's, it's actually on the media outlet. And it's, you know, I have somebody in ABC News doing a press release for me now. I'm reaching out to New York One. We have a couple of film um, companies that have reached out to us about our festivals to send it to. So I hope everybody gets, gets an opportunity, watches it. And then let's all work together to get it out there because it's a piece that's 30 minutes that covers everything that everybody's talking about right here. And I feel we did a good job, and I hope you guys like it. Thank you. Please you okay. leave your cards up here. You can leave the cards up here. <laughs> hold it, hold it, hold it. We have, we have 10 minutes because we got to get out of here. Right. So if you have a question uh, from the panel, make it brief. And that's it. So, who's going to, for the panel? You'll pass out the card. Yes, so on. Hi, my name is Joanne. I'm retired from housing. Ladies, excuse me one second. Please, ladies and gentlemen, we have a limited time and we'd like to hear what this young lady has to say. And I was a community board member 11 for 15 years. So, I want to commend you. We've never had a community wide one. Yes. I think it's great. And I think you ought to have some time from the bar for the to meet as a group, in housing and a senior citizen. Because lots of the board, on my time, we didn't have a lot of committee groups. And I'll go to have it on your own. My question today is if we're talking about solutions, piece of it, you're going to be talking about organizing to get the 30% rate. It, based on your income rather than trying to figure out all these other things. And I mentioned it in the other meeting, but I want to say it to people who have the who have the, the insight to understand what 30% of your income is rather than fighting all these other issues, whether you're rich or poor. And that's what I'd like to see you guys work on to get our elected officials to vote on. Or even write the law. For my board, Community Board 12 uses Facebook, and we also use a mailing. So we use, oh, okay. we use snail mail. You have to call the office, and that number is 212-568-8500. We also run forums just like this, uh, and they happen periodically. So 212-568-8500, and the office is open Monday through Friday, 9 to 5, as most of the board offices are. And we also have our own website, which you can just Google as Community Board 12 Manhattan. Just so I don't forget, I want to know why Community Board 11 is not here. I need to know that answer. You probably can't give it to me. You can't. Can. Can. And next, we'll just go down the line. Yeah, so the question was, how do we get our, our members to come yes, to our community board? So how do you get them? How do we get them to come? For community boards, Ken, we have a listing, and we're constantly, we develop the form. And so when people come into our full board meetings, we have the forms in the back. We have staff members that are in the community for full board meetings. And we ask people to come and sign up, fill out their contacts, tenant association, president, block association, because what we're doing is we're developing a database so that when we have events such as this and other forums, that we can contact them via telephone. The problem is most people don't keep those numbers that they've had, and we need them to come back and update those forms for us. We understand everybody's not web is it's not good on the computer as of now, and that's fine. But we do have the office, and there is staff in the office, and they can feel free to come into our office and complete one of those forms, and the staff members will put them where they need to go. So that includes education, housing, transportation, uh, we have arts and culture, we have several. If you go on our website, we have several committees. That's for any committee. That means if you have your own business, if you're part of a non-for-profit, if you have uh, youth, involvement, if you're willing to mentor, anything that you do in our community that will help other residents in our community, you can come and provide that information to us by filling out the forms and we can connect you because what we really do is we network and then we pull ourselves together. Phone number? The phone number. My phone number here is one of my business cards. The okay. number to the office. I'm sorry. I'll bring it to you. I'll leave it Thank you. And in case we don't get to all the questions, Please fill out this little form here, our text piece of paper, and we will answer it for you. Okay, so don't think you're gonna, we're going to leave here and you're not going to get everything answered. Okay? I, I just so. want to commend you for what you said. I mean, it's like, you know, it just didn't blow my mind because my son is a construction engineer. 
we worked over there on 108th Street next to uh, Mount Sinai. And he says, Mom, these people are not going to have a house. These people, this land has been taken away by the fish. Yeah, exactly what you're saying. I mean, I mean, look, it, 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 to build on that in terms of uh, people coming out, look, at, at 92nd and 2nd Avenue, there were two buildings. Marco referred to a different one. Um, there were two tenement buildings. They're being, they were compromised because they built a tunnel, so the foundations were compromised. They had to take the buildings down. They're putting back an 11 story and a six story building. We're getting, I don't know, 20, whatever the number of apartments are, 20 something apartments. Basically, it's it's even. We're, you know, the ones that are coming down are being replaced, and and for that, for the developer doing that, they're being given 115,000 square feet of additional space as a bonus. Here, Mr. Developer, you don't have to pay. You're getting an Article 11 tax abatement. I don't even know what that means, but I assume it means you don't have to pay taxes. So in addition to that, you're building, you're getting 115,000 square feet that you can either sell to your fellow developers for $300 a foot, or you can stick that on top of your latest development, which may be in Harlem. Because as long as it's within a half a mile of wherever you built it, or the community district, and for those of you know, you know, 92nd Street, half a mile, you can figure out how far north that's going to go. Um, the point is, though, to, the other thing, to get back to the point of coming out, you have to come out, is the point. Come to the community board meetings. Community board, eight, I've been complaining about it. I think the borough president should make the local papers run ads, personally. I think it's a public service announcement. I don't understand why our elected officials are not putting pressure on local papers. The Amsterdam News, run the, run the notice in the newspaper. Putting flyers on the lamppost, I've never been a fan of. Who reads them? I don't read them. Um, and I don't think in our neighborhood we have a lot of seniors who aren't on the web. Our community board is 20 Board 8. The office is on 59th at the park. I can give you the number for community board 8. Um, but if you come out, the number of community board 8 is 212-758-4340. And I'll just say anecdotally, we, we have a lot of hospitals in our in our community district. Yes, they yes. get what they want. Yes. One day a, a building was being cordoned in, the, the light and air were being taken away. 300 people from that building showed up at the community board meeting. The point is, they rose up against a very powerful hospital that has a lot of money, more money than the central time zone. Point was, people said they can't beat the hospital at the community board level. They came out, they won. They won because we had 200 people show up at a meeting and they were loud. And that's the only way. You come up with five people, you're gonna get rolled. I'll just tell you that right now. You show up with three people, you're gonna get crushed. But if you come out with your building and you mobilize, people are gonna notice. You will you will have a voice if you show up. You gotta show up. Do you want me to go? So I'd say there's a two-pronged strategy. It's a grass, grassroots, grass top strategy. The community board, we take in an intake of every person who shows up at any meeting makes it onto the housing list. But we also seek out leaders in the community who we think represent you know, people we want to hear from. So we look, we look for tenant association leaders, we look for community center leaders, we look for co-op board presidents, and we try to actively recruit them to get onto our list, hoping that when we communicate with them, it filters down to people in their building or their community. Uh, I actually have no idea. I can give you my contact. <laughs> 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 so in essence, well, I can give you I can give you Community Board Six phone number. Um, it's two one two three one nine thirty seven fifty. And uh, how we get our meetings and notices out? I mentioned a little bit earlier, but we do work with the neighborhood associations. We have Murray Hill. We have Pearl Bay. We have Kips Bay, so they constantly get all of our information as well, and they pass it along to the tenants in their areas, and respectively, they leave a lot of notices in their lot. Uh, same time, the office where we're located is near the UN, so it's a fairly central location, so a lot of people can go there directly and talk to the staff. The staff also makes themselves available, you know, from emails, and as soon as they get anything, they usually email it to the respective committee. So. Whenever somebody has a housing, a homeless, or a human rights complaint or an issue, they tell the board. If they don't reach out to me directly, the board will reach out to me directly and say, FYI, somebody had this question. Can you reach out to them? 
We also work with some of the local papers, Town and Village, which is a side town paper. Our town, we post some things in there as well. We try to make sure that the community is well aware of these issues. And to Ed's point, when you come out in full force, things do work. Um, not on a housing issue. We had a methadone clinic issue that they were planning on placing in Tudor City. Tudor City came out, and they effectively chased that concept away. It was like they were there for one second. The poor guy felt bad. He, he had to speak after everyone came, and he just looked flustered. And there's no methadone clinic there because the community came out. And that's really what, you know, certainly for the big issues, it's important, but in general, if there's an issue, and if it's starting to percolate, the best time to do is to strike early, because then we can, you know, combat it, put the other people on the defensive rather than be on the defensive. I'm going to try and wrap this up, because another group, we are really behind schedule. So, each community board meets uh, every month, with the exception of July and August. Uh, and usually it's the end of the month. It has its general meeting. There is a public speakers list. And so you have an opportunity to speak for a limited amount of time. Uh, and groups do participate, and I encourage you to do that. And each committee also meets once a month. So we all are here from a housing committee. So I encourage you also to attend those meetings and to bring your friends and, and your neighbors. The work so, gets done at the committee level. Those are the meetings. Do you skip have to know when the community board nine meets? April one second. I'll give the information. We'll give you uh, the schedules. Again, you have the numbers to reach them to find out more information. Or uh, if you have any other questions that we didn't ask, or you couldn't ask, bring them up here and we will get answers for you. Thank you very much. I don't know.